Uh, hi, everyone. I'm uh, Shahbaz. I'm a software engineer at Google. Uh, the title of uh, my talk is Improving the Reliability of Next Generation SSDs Using Warm V Codes. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, Kaveh Mahtaviani and Bianca Schroeder from the University of Toronto. Uh, SSDs store data in cells in the form of voltage levels. Uh, for example, the earliest generation of SSDs called a single level cell drive or uh, SLC drive uh, stored a single bit of data represented by one of the two distinct voltage levels, V0 or V1. As the demand for high density SSDs increased, device manufacturers started placing a lot more bits into the same cell. And so today, uh, in quad level cell drives or QLC drives, uh, we have four bits stored in a single uh, cell represented by one of the 16 different voltage levels from V0 to V15. A voltage in a cell can be monotonically increased from a lower value to a higher value. This operation is called a program operation. The voltage cannot be reduced, but it can be reset to zero. And this operation is called an erase operation, and it's a costly operation in terms of endurance of the SSD drive. If you look at the trend of uh, increased uh, SSD density from the left to the uh, right in the graph, we see a very worrisome trend. We see that the number of times SSDs can be erased reduces by a huge factor uh, as we go from a, a sparsely uh, dense SSD drive to a very dense SSD drive. And this is worrisome because it questions the usability of high density SSD drives uh, in data centers today. One way to alleviate this problem is to do multiple overrides between successive erase operations uh, such that on each write, voltage is monotonically increased. And one way to achieve that is by using write once memory codes or warm codes. In our previously published workshop paper at Hot Storage 20, we introduced the notion of voltage-based uh, warm V codes. Uh, before we understand how warm V codes work, let's take a simple example of a randomly generated input data and see how today data is stored in a QLC drive. A QLC drive consists of QLC cells, which can store at most four bits uh, at a time in a cell. So when we uh, write input data on a QLC cell, first the previously existing data needs to be erased. So the cell erase count increases to one, after which the first word can be written to the underlying drive. Next, before the second uh, word write to the QLC cell, there needs to be another erase operation. Similarly, for the third and the fourth write, there are a total of four erase operations on the underlying QLC cell. Now let's see how these, the same writes would happen uh, when we are using warm V codes. In warm V codes, we transform K bits of input data into N bits of voltage level represented uh, represented by the uh, blue, uh, blue column here. So for example, for a warm V24 configuration, two bits of input data would be transformed into four bits of voltage level represented by one of the 16 voltage levels. On the first write, the first two bits of input data could assume uh, four different values shown here in the pink uh, uh, square boxes. Uh, those are mapped to the first four voltage levels. And we call the first write to the underlying SSD a generation one write. Moving forward, on the second overwrite to the cell, uh, the next four voltage levels uh, are used. And we call this write as a generation two write. And note that between generation one and generation two, we did not have to erase the underlying SSD cell. This is followed by a third write and a fourth write which monotonically increases the voltage level from a lower to a higher value uh, without requiring any erase operation on the underlying QLC cell. Now let's revisit our input data and see how this input data is now written in the context of a warm V uh, coding scheme. Uh, so first, before storing any input data, we will have to erase the data from two QLC cells, cell one and cell two. This increases the cell erase count in warm V configuration to two. Next, each input word is encoded and written to two separate QLC cells, cell one and cell two, at appropriate voltage levels. On writing the second uh, word, the previously existing data does not have to be erased, but it can be overwritten by increasing the voltage level to the next generation. This is followed by the third write and the fourth write without any additional erase operations. 
Hence, using warm v 24 codes, we are able to reduce the erase operation by a factor of two. We propose a number of optimizations to this warm v coding scheme, the details of which can be found in the paper. In this talk, I'm going to talk about one such optimization, which we call code word sharing. Uh, let us revisit our WOMV24 code example. And here, instead of looking at four generations, let's just look at the first two generations of WOMV coding scheme. Uh, here, in each generation, the invariant that we have to maintain is that there should be a one-on-one -on -one mapping between the input data and the voltage level. So we could potentially swap the input uh, to voltage level mapping, which brings two input uh, data bits of successive generations next to each other. Now, instead of using two distinct voltage levels to represent the same input bit across two generations, we could reuse the same voltage level uh, to map the same input data bit 1-1 across two uh, generations. What this helps us do is it frees up one voltage state at the top of generation two, uh, which may seem like a very trivial optimization at first, but if we do this optimization across different generation boundaries, we realize that instead of four, writing four generations, we are now capable of writing five generations to the underlying QLC drive without performing an erase operation. Uh, our hot storage paper introduced the idea of warm V codes, and warm V codes look very promising. However, there are several challenges in translating warm V codes to, to a real SSD. For example, SSDs consist of erase uh, blocks grouped into erase units, which are uh, erased or written together. Uh, writes on an SSD are done at page granularity. Uh, previously written data needs to either be invalidated or needs to be relocated to another uh, location, which adds write amplification uh, in a real world SSD. Uh, new generation of SSDs employ parallelism, and performance is a key uh, aspect of SSDs. So when we are trying to maximize uh, warm weak code endurance gains, we have to make sure that there is no additional performance penalty uh, when we are employing warm weak codes. And finally, warm weak codes are sensitive to workload pattern, so it's very important for us to analyze warm weak codes against different types of workload patterns. In order to answer these questions, we implement warm v code in Linux Light NVM module backed by FEMU. Uh, the Linux Light NVM module consists of three main data structures, a ring buffer that stages all the writes coming in from the application and file system, parallel unit across which data is sharded, and erase unit, which is a logical unit uh, of write and erase in an SSD. We place our warm v coder to intercept all the writes that are coming from the application and file system and encode the incoming data before it's written to the ring buffer. We change the garbage collection logic to only perform uh, selective erase operations. And finally, we add a QLC extension to FEMU. We make a, a, a we, uh, overall, we implement our, uh, uh, our approach in 700 lines of code. We make a number of uh, implementation decisions uh, while, while implementing our WOMB code. Uh, we increase the page size to accommodate for uh, space amplification uh, in WOMB codes. We uh, employ uh, delayed page relocation, uh, so we do not relocate a page until the maximum generation of the page has reached. And finally, we completely eliminate uh, read amplification uh, from WOMB codes using uh, a novel optimization, which we call no read mode, where all cells in an erase unit are always kept at a same generation. In order to evaluate uh, our implementation, we look at uh, five uh, workload trace repositories uh, containing over 800 workload traces. Uh, note that these uh, traces do not have trim command. With uh, the addition of trim command, our gains would be much higher. And here's a summary of our results. On the x-axis, we show the different workloads. On the y-axis, we show the number of uh, erase units that were erased. Here, lower is better. The red bars indicate the amount of uh, erase units that were erased uh, in no-warm configuration. And the blue and the green bar indicate 
uh, the amount of gains that we can get in two configurations of WOMB codes. We see that across all workloads, uh, we are consistently able to beat the no WOMB configuration using uh, our WOMB codes uh, and GC optimizations. Overall, we see that across all workloads, we are able to get up to 4 to 11x reduction in erase cycles using WOMB codes. Although our uh, endurance results are very promising, uh, WOMB codes do have uh, space overheads. Uh, so to answer uh, the question of whether WOMB codes affect write performance, uh, we rerun the workloads. And uh, with WOMB codes, since we have reduced the amount of erase operations, which are time consuming operations, that should help improve the performance, uh, improve the write performance uh, of our implementation. Uh, so we again run all our workloads uh, shown on the x-axis, and we compute the amount of time it takes to run each workload. And we see that uh, using our no-read optimization and GC opt optimization, we are able to bring down the performance overheads of WOMV codes to close to no WOM configuration in almost all cases, except two cases where the workloads were not workload friendly, were not SSD friendly, um, and uh, had a higher uh, degree of WOM coding scheme, which is WOM v14 coding scheme. Uh, overall, the write performance overhead is kept under 8% in our implementation. Uh, the final metric that we want to see is the read performance. Uh, although on average we see negligible read latency overhead, but both SSD manufacturers and users are interested in uh, uh, interested in the tail read uh, latency, and in order to measure that, we look at the 95th percentile uh, read latency associated with no WOM configuration and WOM V configuration, and we plot a CDF of the read latency requests, and we see that there is 0.6 to 22% read performance overhead in the last 5% of read requests. And one final question that we want to ask ourselves is with WOM V24 uh, coding scheme, uh, we are basically reducing the logical space of QLC to store only two bits per cell. Now, this is equivalent to using MLC drive that also stored two logical bits per cell. And without using WOMB coding, MLC drive has better endurance than QLC drive. So the key question that we want to answer here is how does WOMB24 QLC endurance compare to MLC endurance? And in order to answer that, we run all our uh, workloads uh, on the x-axis, and we uh, compute the ratio of the endurance uh, gains in WOM v24 configuration uh, to the endurance gains in MLC drive configuration. On the y-axis, any number greater than one indicates WOM v24 QLC endurance beats MLC drive endurance. And we are able to see that consistently across all workloads, WOM v24 uh, QLC endurance uh, beats the MLC endurance. Uh, to summarize, uh, we present the first design and implementation of non-binary WOMB codes uh, for QLC drives. Uh, we are able to achieve uh, 4 to 11x reduced erase operations with minimal performance overheads. And finally, uh, we have merged FIMU extension uh, for TLC and QLC support to uh, FIMU master and our WOMB simulator code is open, uh, openly available for uh, WOMB research. With that, I would like to open the floor for questions. <laughs>